So, here it is. Are we there? Second Corinthians. Two nine. But it is written, the eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither have entered into the what heart of man. You see, the things which is which God has prepared for them that that love Him. Second Corinthians two nine. But God has revealed them unto us by His Spirit, not by the Word, but by His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, ye the deep things of God. So. Every time you read the word of God, this is why it's good to pray while you're reading. So that uh, he can reveal things to you by his spirit. You see? Not by the written word. The written word, it will guide you, but it won't. The written word will guide you. But it takes God's spirit to speak to you through that word. So, example of that. You're sitting there, you're reading the word. And then God will say to you, this is what you need to do. And then the word will confirm what God has said. Yes. See, anybody can take this word, twist it, do whatever they want to do, to validate what they're trying to do. So if you're trying to do something. Okay. You can find the scripture to back it. Then you can say. Oh this is God. But God said. Hey, wait a minute. I haven't talked to you about this. Because you haven't meditated that word long enough. To allow the, to God to speak to you. Th through that word. You see. Can technology do this. Can technology bring you to truth? No. But yet, we seek and we search after technology. We become a, a, a what it is? What what do they call it? Google Academy. Everything, boom, boom, boom. Let me Google it. Let me Google it. Let me Google. It. Let, me Google it. let me Google some facts. Let me do this. Let me do that. But when it comes to you, are you searching? For the truth? Or are you just looking for the facts? Only God can divide that and show you the difference. Not your technology. Satan is always trying to offer you something. So what he's trying to offer you is what? Deceit? Let's turn to John 10.10 10 real quick. Good Lord. He says, the thief come, but not to steal, kill, and destroy. He said, I have come that you may have life, and that you may have it more abundantly. You see that? I may have life and have it more abundantly. If you look at Job, Isaac, David, Jesus, the very thing they had in common is that they, they feared God. Job. Whatever the thief come to do, God has already had truth set up for you to get over it or to deal with it. You are not in a position of losing even when you think you are. Understanding your kingdom, kingdom position is determined by how you fear God, how you feel God, how you fear God, how you reverence God, how you how you worship him. Things that came to me when I've been driving, they just come. Some things come to me as you've been as, as I've been driving. It's dropped into me is I understood. I say, hey, so this is a path or pattern that I'm going to follow in order to move. But see, I realized, remember the, the scripture said, uh, be still and know that I'm God? Yes. What he is saying is, be still and examine your fear for him. How are you worshiping him? How are you praising him? 
Is God a part of your life? Or is God a sometime reaction for you? Only when you're going through something or you're dealing with something. Are you leaving God out? Do you pray daily? Are you communicating with him? How are you reverencing God? So, let me look here at Romans 8.2. It says, for the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. And then, let's go up to verse 1. I'm, I'm reading this back. Was therefore, now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk, what? Not after the flesh, but after what? The, the spirit. So, everything that we do, we should have in mind God. How is it, or how do he wants, or where do he want me to be? That comes from acknowledging God at every port, in every point in your life. We have gotten to the point that technology has taken over that, or who we know. Fearing of the Lord is respecting him for who he really is. Trying to get an understanding of this, your mind have a hard time of comprehending because we have gotten so complacent in dealing with how we communicate these days. Where was technology when Jesus was around? Now, I'm not saying technology doesn't have its place. It does. But do, are you placing yourself in technology or are you placing yourself in God? Every time something come up, are you dependent on what you know and what you can Google? Or are you dependent on what God can do through his word for you? Now, if I turn around, if I text you a message, and if I text you a message, I can group it together and call it group text. Am I right? Yes. Right? God don't believe in group text when it comes to you. Good Lord. God believe in direct contact with you. Come on. Yes. This direct contact will bring enlightenment to you. But the longer you depend and look at what you think you can do, the more, the more you have fallen in the traps of technology. Now think about it. A lot of the things we do, first thing we do, get up in the morning, we what? Check our cell phone. See who texts us. Hey, you know. We're, the first thing we should do is pick up the Bible and what? Worship who? God. First thing we do, we pick up our phone and we look at, see who texts, what's going on in this world today. So, how is that worshiping God by you looking at that cell phone? Now, if you pick up, the, pick up your cell phone and the first thing that comes up is the word of God, you start reading and meditating on it, oh, that, that's one thing, okay, that's a good thing. Because... Even though the world's in the phone, but God can still talk to you through all his words, you see? But even though this phone is a part of technology, but it's nothing like holding your own Bible and meditating in it for yourself. Because there's something about this technology that takes the closeness away. Because it has, it's, it's, it's a fact, facts-bearing tool. And God isn't a facts-bearing tool. God is a truth revelator. Hallelujah. He revelates and reveals the truth to whatever you're dealing with at the time you're dealing with. Amen. Let's turn back to John. I want to look at 663. 
He says, it is the spirit that what? Quickens. Not your technology. The flesh, what? Profit, what? Nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are what? Spirit. And what it said at the beginning is the spirit, what? That quickened. So, you drop down the, the, I speak unto you that they are the spirit, that they are spirit and that they are life. The words that, that I speak to you are spirit and life. Spirit and life, the words. I speak to your spirit and life. So the words that are spoken by Jesus, by this, by the book, the words. If you're meditating them long enough, it's going to reveal God's spirit and his truth. It don't reveal facts. It reveals truth. You see? So what people are looking for is quick gratification, quick instantification, quick everything. They don't want to take the time and soak and be still like they should. Because they want answers now. Well, you can have answers now, but the answers are based on fact, not based on truth. So now we are becoming a society that lives our life based on facts, not based on truth. Because we don't have the fear of God. We can't bear to stand the truth. Good God. The truth, the fear of God, will allow you to be able to deal with your truth. Job, prime example. He dealt with the truth. Okay, he know that his family was not there. He knew that everything that he had wasn't there. See, they were all facts. Okay, it was all facts. But the truth is that he was fearful of God and he was a servant of God. That was the truth. The truth is God gave him everything he had. The truth is God gave you everything you had. So if something was lost, it don't mean that it was lost. That it means that it was time for a transition. Because you didn't understand of what you was operating, what platform you was operating. I'm going to say that platform you was operating of. Either you was operating out of facts or you was operating out of truth. Because you didn't understand the two, you lost your position. Of understanding and the knowledge. You see? But if you know that God has this. If you're fearing God. If you're worshiping him. If you're praising him like you should. Hallelujah. You know that you know that you know. That whatever happened. God is going to get glorified for him. You are not bound to that situation. Not unless you bind yourself. You see? So, what have I been stumbling through all day to try to get to you or try to convey to you? That when it is written, anyone can speak written word. Good Lord. But when it is said, there's no longer, how can I put this? Anyone can speak the written word. But when the word is said, when it is said, that's when truth bears witness of it. So if you're reading the word, you're meditating on the word, you're listening for truth, when it's spoken to you, by God. That's when you know you're ready. Do not let technology be your outside influence. 
Let your influence be the rhema word of God. Let the word resonate in your heart. But again, you have to understand that the fear of the Lord is being aware of him at all times. When you're not aware, that means you are subject. When you're not aware, that means you are subject to whatever that is going on around you. When you're not aware. Awareness give you the hindsight of what and how you should be doing. Give you an hindsight. Give you, give, 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 you, give, give, give you the hindsight so you can see. Now, another thing too, when you in when you are fearing God. God will also put you in a position that you judge and not according to appearances. Because he will put the judgment through righteous judgment. So that means you're seeing things within a different hindsight. Now, you know, I, you know I, people come around us all the time saying certain things. <clears throat> And the only thing that I can say on a couple of things is, wow, that's it. Wow. Because truly, they don't make any sense. And uh, I listen because as you speak, it, it reveals how you're thinking. And where are you gathering your source of information from? How you speak. So now, when you decide, when you decide that you're going to slow it down and spend time with God and understand and have a revelation. Now see, let me see if I can put it this way as well. The revelation will stop me from, my, my, my fear of God will stop me from sinning. And, and, and let me put it like this. It stopped me from stepping out on my wife. You see? It stopped me from drinking alcohol. It stopped me from, because I'm constantly thinking about how will God feel about me doing the thing that I'm doing. You, 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 you understand? I just, I just want to make this clear. It will cause you and force you to operate in love that other people will not understand. Man, you got all these beautiful women you don't want to know. I have a wife. I have a God that I'm serving. That I'm, ac that I'm accountable to. I'm here because of the fear of him. Not because I, 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 I chose to be here. It's because he chose me to be here. Am I always going to be right? No. Am I always going to be on point? Of course not. That's how come I got to learn to trust in him and do things in season and out of season. And what that means and what that truly means is that I'm doing things according to his will, not mine. Because if you do things according to his will, there's some things you ain't going to want to do. But you know what? You don't have anything to do with it but to do it. You, you see? Anything to do with it. So, now, I'm trying to close here. We also must understand that the fear of the Lord is being aware that, we, that everything we do is going to be tested by his fire. All right? There will be a day when all my works will be tested. And it says God is a consuming fire. 
So, you know, we have to be aware of what we are doing. First Corinthians 3, turn in. I'm going to, this is where I'm going to close at. 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest. You see that? Yes. Every man's work shall be made manifest. If it's going to be for God or you're doing it based on yourself. For the day shall be, shall be declared. Shall the day <laughs> declare it. Mm, I cannot talk for some reason today. Because it shall be revealed by what? Fire. Mm -hmm. Say God's consuming fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. You see that? Yeah. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer what? Loss. Mm -hmm. But he himself shall be what? Saved. Yet so far as by what? Fire. So everything you do, you need to make sure that you do, it has the signature and the authorization letter from God. It's not done based on your feelings or based on what technology say you should do. The move that you make should be based on, is it pleasing God and how is it? But it can't do that unless you have a reverential fear for God. You have to be aware that God is always around and God is always near you. If you lose that insight, then you lose your direction that you need to go in. And then everything you do from that point, will, everything you do is going to be tested anyway. But everything from that point is going to be burned up. You're going to suffer loss or even just going to bring forth fruit the way it should. And that's when, when we lose that insight, that's when we start forcing things. Hmm. Then I'm getting ready to close here. That's when we try to start making things happen. You don't have to make anything happen. All you do is you have to put yourself in line. You put yourself in line, then the things is going to happen. You, you understand that? So don't look at how you can help. Look to see how you can surrender. Surrendering is helping, whether you realize it or not. Just like giving is receiving. When you give, you shall receive. It's, 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 it's weird how that works for God, isn't it? When you do the opposite, it, it comes back. But you must understand that whatever, what, whatever you decide to do, career, job, move, anything, you got to understand that um, God has to be in alignment in order for his blessings to come with that. Hmm. I said that was, I was closing there. That's what I said. And I probably am. But I need to look at this first before, we, uh, before I shut this thing down. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> Proverbs 9 10 it says, Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. That's nine. <clears throat> nine, 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 ten. And it says, And fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. Of the holy and what? Understanding. It's holy and understanding. Holy and understanding. So the beginning of anything is the fearing of the Lord. 
So y'all have a problem? You need wisdom? Reverence God. That's fear in him. Reverence him. That way, you know that you know that it's going to be what God planned it to be, how it's going to work out. Amen. Amen. Well, this is Pastor Robert Porter of New Life Christian Center Ministries. Thank you for being here with me this Sunday. God bless you, and I shall, and I will see you soon.